Well, it's the second day of my Gulf Shores, Alabama vacation. And right now, it's a little before 12.30. Yeah, I'm sitting here in my motel room. Uh, my parents went out to eat somewhere, yeah, if you're wondering. So I'm pretty much here by myself. So, so I decided to do a quick vlog while I'm, at, while I'm at it. Since for some reason I, I never thought about doing one last year, which I don't know why. But anyway, um, yeah, this is the motel room we got. See. <clears throat> There's my laptop bag right there, and that's the bed I slept in over there. But, uh, as you can see, that's the view from our room right now. But, yeah, it's been okay so far. I, th I think we're going home probably tomorrow, though. Um, yeah. Let's see. We went to eat at uh, Applebee's last night. It was pretty good. Uh, I, I, I think, and one thing I noticed last night while we ate there is like a lot of the, a lot of the female waitresses kept staring at me. And it's like, and funny thing is, my mom says she noticed it too. Yeah. So I mean, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Don't really know what to say about that, but hey, let's not complain. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, see, I don't really have anything to say right now. I just wanted to check in, I guess. Um, um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm staying at the uh, yeah Best Western uh, let's see well, Riviera Riviera Inn is what it's called. Yeah, Best Western Riviera Inn, whatever. Um. I went to look for this uh, geocache I found out about this morning, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find it. <clears throat> um, hmm. well, I guess that's about all I'm going to say because I really don't have anything to talk about in particular. So, I'll probably take some more videos of the beach and all that and upload them later on. So, until then. It's a big fort. Why don't you just go through there? Hey, look in there. Wait. Tell me if you look at this. Look at this wall. Look in there, them old cannons. Eight seconds, and I outside the door of the fort. Oh, come in. It will begin at the front of the fort church under the seventh flag. Thank you. Yes, sir.
First of all, the big, uh, thickness of the brick wall, you can see from the threshold here, is well protected from inside with cannon fire or shrapnel. The arc can support a great deal of mass on top. You need to support a lot of mass on top because that is where your guns are going to be. Um, one thing is that some of them have wooden facades on, two blue ones to the rear of these, two uh, brown ones in front of them. All these casemates with wooden facades um, were filled in for various reasons at the time of the Civil War um, and to pull out troops and actually mainly for storage. Um, you'll come with me, we're going to talk about storage. Uh, Alright, so y'all just walk right inside and show y'all a little bit how it's like to live during the Civil War. Or this is from the Started the Mississippi rifle because it was carried by Jefferson Davis, who, was after the Mexican War, he carried. Excuse me, his regiments carried these during the Mexican War, and after the Mexican War, of course, um, Jefferson Davis becomes Secretary of the War, um, a famous United States Senator, and uh, during the Civil War, he's actually the President of the Confederacy. Um, the Mississippi rifle is generally 54 caliber. This model happens, or this one is, uh, actually happens to be 58 caliber. Um, it fires a soft flat projectile. Uh, the gun here uh, is, like I said, it's a rifle. These guns, are, excuse me, prior to this time, is uh, now rifles did exist at the time period, but they, they took over a minute to load. You gave these to your sharpshooters, your specialist troops, um, and it took talent, um, and also because they were so expensive, uh, they had to be take, well taken care of. In the um, early 19th century, however, a Frenchman by the name of Claude Manet um, remedied this situation. He increased the speed of the cartridge. This is the command that requires that causes the army to require you to have your two front teeth. You have to tear that cartridge to be able to load the gun. Charge cartridge. Command charge cartridge. He pours the powder down the barrel and he'll squeeze the grease bullet out of the paper and then insert the paper as a wadding to hold it tightly in place. Withdraw round. He withdraws the and spins. Everyone spins in the same direction. And this weapon is right-handed. Every weapon in the Civil War is right-handed. If you are a lefty, as soon as you join the army, you become a righty. Uh, there's no exception. You will accommodate the army. The army does not accommodate you and your special needs. Ram cartridge. The ram cartridge, the rammer is introduced to the barrel and the ground is seated. Return ram. Rammer's return, and when he returns it, he uses this pink thing. And the reason why is because the gun's now loaded. If it had a bullet inside of it, um, basically, if he grips it with a full fist and places uh, and seats the rammer, what happens is his knuckles are now exposed to the muzzle of the gun. The gun goes off, the bullet comes out, severs the fingers off of his hand. Um, and probably uh, necessitates the actual amputation of his hand also to control the bleeding. <clears throat> Shoulder, arm. Right, face. Prime. Command Prime brings the gun down and brings it to half cock, which is effectively your safety for this weapon. And the small pouch that was on the front of his belt contains his um, percussion caps, and that's what he'll place in the middle of the gun. The percussion cap is a uh, basically a piece of sheet brass that is stamped in the form of a cup. On the interior of it is fulminated mercury. The, the hammer is brought back full cock. And folks, if you need to, you may cover your ears at this time. If it's uh, if it's your ears. Fire! Oh, fire at will. Now, the marching in the battle is so...